Hello Tubesters, it's Gav, welcome to another one of my videos and today, uh, I'm shooting this after I've actually done the modelling we are doing our build on the A37B Dragonfly as used in Vietnam or if you do the Republic of Korean version you can do it in the 1990s I believe uh, so there's two sets of decals if you go back to watch the, the unboxing uh, I'm too lazy to work out how to put things up in the corners and that but it, I only did it the other day uh, I'm building this, I wanted a fairly simple kit, uh, I like Vietnam subjects, uh, and I'm building it as a dedication, tribute, well I don't know what you call it, to uh, Gary over at Gary's Stuff, um, I just think he's a decent fella, and as I do sometimes with my builds and my, my figure painting, I try and give people a shout out uh, you know, helps it. Uh, and if you're doing a, a kit build or a, or a figure, um, it's a bit of interest for people. They can then go over and check that person out. And uh, it's just me uh, saying uh, thanks for for you know things like the videos and that 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 some people like Gary do. So um, go over and check Gary out. You'll see he's a lot more slick uh, than I am, and uh, you know he puts a lot of effort into the minutiae of running a YouTube channel. Like myself and several other people out there. No, 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 I'm not naming names. Uh, we just put what I call fire and forget. Remember the old Law 94, those of us that use it? Uh, throw it away afterwards. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> just fire and forget my videos. I, I'm no good at I cannot spend hours and hours. I can spend hours and hours talking at the camera, but I can't spend that time squidging it all together and taking bits out and adding music and all that bits. So, I've just shot the first bit, um, it's gone surprisingly well <laughs> for the tiny bit that it is, so I uh, hope you enjoy it, uh, just bear with it, the lighting, I do, I've got about three lights on it, uh, I'm, as much as I'm okay rambling away at the camera, when it actually comes to building something under the camera, because I'm not very good, I get really nervous and it, you know, it, all the stuff that you, you hear people say really, so uh I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I think it's a great little aircraft, probably one of the best Cessnas ever made. And it's, uh, as I say, nickname is the Super Tweet. And um, it, as you'll see in the video, it's a fairly, when I say simple, it's because it's a simple aircraft. And uh, out of the box build, I'm not doing any extras to it. No, it's not because it's Gary. <laughs> it's just, Gary does a lot of that. He just, He'll put a video up, show you how to build it, paint it, and all the rest of it. It's occasionally he throws extras at it, but a lot of time he doesn't. Because there's a lot of people out there that don't want to do all the extras. Uh, so I thought, out of the box build, small little aircraft. Uh, I thought that was a good dedication to the man. So uh, thank you very much for, if you're going to watch the video. Second part, as I've said at the end of the video, I'm not even sure where it's going to be yet. I might have to do a bit of painting off camera. We'll see, uh, but uh, I need some priming work done on that so I can at least get the, the fuselage together and then we'll take it from there. But uh, majority of it will be stuck and rambled <laughs> on camera. Thanks again, I know I'm yakking away. Look after yourselves and uh, enjoy the video. Thanks for joining me at the Bench Tubesters. So this is the A37B as was used in Vietnam. Uh, it's a Cessna aircraft and uh, it's known as a Dragonfly uh, in official circles. Uh, the pilots tended to call it the Super Tweet. Uh, it's a coin aircraft so it's, uh, it's, it's meant to uh, do counterinsurgency operations and it's still being used today in some South American countries. Uh, like a lot of these type of aircraft they were built to be uh, sorry that's my computing enough I'll just turn the sound off uh, that won't be edited out uh, the, they were designed to be fairly cheap you know off the rack type of things in uh, that you could put together uh, they did a couple of tests and they realized obviously it needed some strengthening and things to, from being a basic trainer to uh, to a more um, lethal type of uh, aircraft. I've heard nothing but good things about this kit. It was made in the late 90s by Academy. Uh, 
so you know how it's going to go together I don't know but according to everybody else that I've read build reviews of uh, it goes together really well of course that wasn't Gav building it uh, I'm doing this as a dedication to a, a fellow youtuber uh, Gary over at Gary Stuff's uh, channel uh, a really nice fella um, I, I, I like the way he rolls over there uh, you know he, he you'll get a lot more polished <laughs> definitely a lot more polished videos than you do on my channel uh, but he's got like 10,000 subs and he's one of these guys that really wants to you know reach for the stars type of thing uh, all power to him for that uh, myself you know I just bimble along uh, but I just like how he's got time for for, for everybody uh, he he enjoys uh, promoting the hobby in the best sense of the word so um, yeah Dedicated to Gary over at Gary's stuff. I will be doing other dedications as we as we go. I sometimes I've done it on my channel quite often, uh, mainly with figures and things. But um, uh, what I don't want to do is is you know how I I get I get halfway through a project and it gets binned or shelved. <laughs> so by putting somebody's name on it, hopefully it gets through to the end. So um, yeah, this is what's uh, in the box. I did do a quick unboxing, uh, so you know it's ready to go. So let's get the old uh, Tamiya side cutlers, highly recommended, and uh, let's uh, start cutting some styrene off the sprues. Uh, I just wanted to uh, quickly mention a couple of things. Now most of you know I have mental health problems and my modelling suffers because I really struggle following the, the instructions and if the instructions are a tiny bit out it can really mess with my head because I'm not like a lot of you guys uh, I w who will be able to jump five steps ahead and do other things I, I, I do it from time to time but it's really easy for me to get into a mess because my memory goes in and out and stuff It's um, I've got PTSD and other stuff and it, 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 it just messes me about so uh, I use obviously like a lot of the guys I market somehow uh, I know that like Jeff's been saying how he, he this is Jeff from Jeff's Models I believe you know you are Jeff Colorado Jeff uh, he will get his pencil and he'll section all that out well this is he this is straightforward enough for me I don't need to do that um, on some of the others probably but uh, not on this one but I do mark them off as I go um, so I just wanted to throw that out there uh, you know I, I do struggle with with following these things although this is a fairly straightforward uh, build by the look of it so let's crack on what I've decided to do is uh, put the cockpit top so the seats um, you know the, the joysticks all, all that stuff together because I've just been reading the instructions and what I do like about it is the instructions they've got all the colors underneath so you're not having to flip back to the front of the instructions to to get them if that makes sense so we've got we've also got the seat rails as well but everything's in dark gray uh, with just a olive drab um, seat uh, base and a red uh, I'm gonna call it headrest is it but <laughs> you know that type of thing so uh because what I'll do is I'll 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 get the the lacquer primer out uh, off camera once I've got enough built and I'll uh, I'll actually get that uh, get that primed I'll just get these pieces actually off the sprue first um, obviously we've got two seats the the seats themselves uh, for the second crew member from what I've been reading weren't actually uh, used unless they were doing um, fire control you know calling in artillery or, or other 
other aircraft strikes. Uh, they, they tended to save weight and they could carry a bit of extra fuel or munitions. I mean the use of the Super Tweet, it wasn't, it wasn't actually um, widespread I suppose you could say. I mean the, the South Vietnamese used them uh, on the drawdown, well while the Americans were there but on the drawdown obviously the Americans transferred a lot over uh, and a lot did fall into the North Vietnamese hands when they actually took over the country and they did keep some flying for a couple of years I believe but obviously as spares dwindled uh, they had to they had to retire them or at least sell them on to other countries I don't know if uh, they said that Flores are making these sanders anymore I've still got a few left I will have to try and uh, get some more um, sticks at some stage. Now we've got a I take it that's a bit of a sinkhole sink mark there. I mean it's all part of the head restraint. Is that a better word? Head restraint? I'm not even sure what they uh, what they actually uh, we call that, it's not like in a car, I suppose, yeah, head restraint in a car, isn't it? So I suppose it's the same thing. I'll often add a bit of water to my, uh, whatever I'm doing, just to keep the dust down. But then on this occasion, let's not make it harder than it needs to be. Yeah, I think that little, that's definitely the, the little divot there is just supposed to be I think a bit of shut them trying to show a bit of sponginess I suppose and uh, I think we can get away with the if that is a sink mark or not um, I think we might get away with that it's all part of the like the foam backing or whatever they they put inside it Uh, Swan Morton without actually gouging too much of the plastic out. Probably should have done that first. Probably not going to see any of that anyways, it's going to be in the cockpit floor. As I said, I will probably be doing these in, in bite sized pieces, I think. Um, <laughs> this is Gav's. This is Gav's uh, videos. When are they ever bite sized But you know what I mean. <laughs> These are the rails. There's a small bit of detail, um, not a lot. This is going to be purely out of the box. I'm nervous as hell doing it under the. Ca I mean, yeah, I know. I put me, me swab me face to the to the camera and I chat away. But when I'm building a model myself I'm just here at the bench and it all the ways I do things wrong uh, I'm not getting judged on but <laughs> when you're doing it on the camera there are some really nice people out there but there's also some planks that will love to uh, pull you up on whatever you're doing as I say I don't make any try and make any uh, I'll sell tickets on myself whatever that I'm some modeler decent modeler because we all know I'm not um, I like to paint my figures um, and again I'm not top drawer at that but I'm you know I'm, I'm fairly advanced on that whatever figures I happen to be painting at the time but uh, my modeling uh, probably because I don't do enough of it as well I always say with the with the uh, the painting you know you don't get better unless you do things uh, it's just having the time I need to paint figures to bring a bit of income into the house and it has to take priority and then of course I 
like to paint other figures just because I like painting figures. Um, so everything gets gets pushed back slightly. I mean, it's like Lexington. I've I've been having a real a lot of fun with my one in seven hundred scale Lexington uh, CV two. And I do intend to be doing a bit on her either tomorrow night or Thursday just to try and finally finish those orlicans that gave me so much trouble. Because um, I'm not that far off now doing a load of photo etch on her and she's not that far off from it finally getting some uh, some some primer on her and we can get some colours down and uh, then I've just got to do a sea base for her and add the crew and obviously all the all the aircraft. Right, so there are there are eject. Well, I'm saying eject. I take it they are ejector seats. Um, I honestly don't know, but I think they are. Right, we've got a hole there, but there's nothing actually. Quick look at the instructions. Don't they go together. Oh, that's why you're full. They go together, don't they? Well, they should do. Let's have a look. Yeah, we've got a pin, pin in a hole. That's me mixing them up. Right. So that more or less. Sorry, I keep doing everything off the camera. I'm not used to it. I should be after all these years on YouTube, but. Something like that. Yeah, they must be the ejection rails. So that goes there. And that must be that side, I think. Take it, this is called dry fitting. <laughs> oh. I think that's how it goes. Yep, we'll take a chance on that. Well, we're still on the rails. What I've actually done, there we go, Gav, come on. Uh, I've just cleaned up the cockpit top itself and that's what the rails look like when they're sat in uh, it's not I've jiggled it about and it just about looks straight there uh, there is that gap uh, at the top so as in divide between the two rails so I'll just have to have a look at that um, but I just thought we'd do the other one when I can get on camera where are you Gav there we are Right, handy that we can get the tweezers in this uh, this little gap here. You watch me glue's gonna evaporate before our eyes before I get this one on, but if it just tacks it I just didn't wanna I'm I'm really bad and I did all that off camera yet again. You'll have to forgive me, we'll get there in the end. Uh I'm really bad at getting fingerprints over everything, you know, even I try and not put, oh, come on, I try and put, not put too much glue on, um, like this you see, and I've done all that, and you watch, I'm going to, going to end up getting glue over uh, the piece. I mean, I do try and clean the glue off, I've used a bit of post, post attack here just to, Get our uh, again just to try and keep the thumbprints off. Learned that off Jeff as well. 
Jeff doesn't even build airplanes. Never mind. What's wrong with your man? Eh? So again, I, I've got to say I've not. I have obviously looked at lots of super tweets. Uh, there isn't that many Vietnam ones, uh, especially obviously cockpits and things like that. Um, but I think I'm happy to to just keep it out the box. I'm not going to go to town adding little bits on this. Um, I'm just happy to try, actually try and build something and get it completed. So we'll just add a bit more belts and braces glue. Probably undoing the stuff I've already put on, but never mind. There we go. Just while that goes off for a minute or two. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how how simple cockpit is in real life. Um, uh, it's going to be overall grey. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll keep it on film. I'll stick this one in a, in a minute. Um, this fitted really, really well, by the way. Uh, just dry fit this the rails at the back here so that um, it it doesn't push the seat up, um, but it does fit quite nicely. Uh, but yeah, fairly simple cockpit. Uh, it, it seems to be like the classic dark grey um, that a lot of the Air Force used, and uh, we've got a red headrest olive olive uh, green um, like soft seat I suppose you'd call it cushion I'd hate to call it cushion really not exactly military is it but <laughs> I think that's what it's supposed to do no sitting on parachutes I don't think I might be wrong right let's try and get this guy in where you can actually see it let's take him off the oh, I'm trying to do everything at once here I'm just checking that I haven't got any of the uh, poster putty left on. As I say, you might have to you might have to jiggle the uh, the rails about a bit to get them to sit so it's the the seat actually sits properly. Now isn't it fair that once the first one off camera sat right in straight away, this one doesn't want to do it, which I imagine is maybe the rail. Can we go forward? Yeah, I think that was the reason. Yeah, so. Let's put a bit under there for now. Fairly straight, doesn't it? Yeah, we've only got to actually built something on the camera. How about that? I think that's all it will need to hold it. Uh, as our rails. And this has got a, I'm undeciding yet because there isn't any, I'm not adding any detail in it. You can either have the, it's got that big bubble canopy and I don't know whether to add it, as having it open or shut because I do believe you can have it both ways. Um, but as I say, I'm not really adding any de extra details to it. Right, I'll get the, uh, the sticks off the, off the, off the uh, sprue and we'll get those added. Right, here's our steering column. I think we'll just clean it off a bit. Um, there's a little little chunk of tab there. It, it might, this is where I'm trying not to. Oh, I'll just try and cut it off. It's not going to be seen. No. Oh, well, that's worth a try. Uh, I just don't want to snap the stick it might have 
to be perfect because it's quite a deep quite a deep hole for it to go in. I think we will trim that one down a bit, that is a bit excessive. Yeah, that's what we wanted, that's more or less got most of our work done. I do try and, and keep the dust down to I mean I'm not wearing a mask and I I, I can't I can wear a mask for spray and I always wear a mask for spraying and when I'm working with resin but because I have to put my reading glasses on the steam from them if it's just a normal uh, even the rubber mask can be difficult sometimes you can't I struggle wearing a, a rubber mask to, to try and do all this this modeling I'm, as I say actually um, just try it for a fit the hole looks quite big actually for what it is that's not too bad so that so that one's dry fitted in Ooh. Don't sneeze now, Gavin, lose it. Now, have I got that right? I believe I have. Let me just check the instructions. So the bend is going towards the on the instrument panel, and that looks right. See if we can put this one dry fitted in as well. Please, tweezers, don't fly off. I always, I don't know why I always hold my breath <laughs> doing things like that. Right, uh, we'll, I'll put a dab of glue on and we'll just manipulate them very slightly away from the, the seat, I think. Have, I'd imagine they've got some form of rubber or leather gaiter on the base of that. Uh, there is a, a sizeable gap there. It is fairly a fairly you know easy fit to get them in, but it's a looks a bit on the excessive size gap wise there. I might actually just try and put some filler in afterwards before I paint, put the primer on. Uh, I'm, uh, I know there's always a question, do people put, you know, how they paint? Um, I can't see how you can put lacquer, uh, sorry, acrylic paint straight over plastic. It just seems to smear to me. So I'm going to uh, spray my usual lacquer over it, uh, my AK lacquer, through the airbrush. But then I will probably... I'll spray the actual cockpit with a dark grey. Whether I use acrylic or lacquer, I'm not sure yet. And then I'll obviously just brush paint the, the bits that need brush painting. But before I do the, the actual lacquer, I might just try and stick a bit of a you know filler in there. Nothing to sand down, it'll just have to be some of this um, Vallejo plastic putty. The problem is on 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 quite open pieces like that where you know it, it might not be very wide but it's quite deep it doesn't always doesn't always uh, look brilliant but I'm not going to try and obviously sand that down that with some some uh, normal putty that would look uh, that'd be a bit silly uh, and I'll just check the tops of these rails as well normally there is a I think there is normally a, a you know where the, the rails come together there is normally a join so that's that bit. So what we can do, hurrah, without pushing our glue over Gav. Is we'll go oh, let's get the camera back, Gavs. Let the tubes to see what we're doing. Right, so we can mark one as done. And these guys are done uh, there's a couple of different colors just watch out for when you when you're painting like the headrests and that the because you can either have a, a Vietnam era United States Air Force 
or you can have a Republic of Korean Air Force uh, from the 1990s, I believe. And uh, they do have some slight differences on the inside as well as the out. So just, just bear in mind your colour callouts. Uh, but as I say, uh, not that it's on, on the bottom of this first page, it's actually all the, the symbols, you know, do's and don'ts. But the, they do run, they do run uh, the, the, the colour callouts along the bottom of the, the instructions, which is good. That's everything marked off there. That's always a satisfying, uh, satisfying to see when it's covered in the yellow marker pen. Right on the second, second part, which I want to at least get, get cut off the sprue and everything, so I can, I can actually like prime it and and, and get it together. Um, well, not get it together, but you know what I mean. Pr prime it. Uh, so I can paint the inside. Um, I think that'll be all that we can probably do for now. So give me five minutes while I, I sort myself out and we'll get these uh, these two halves off the sprue and we'll uh, we'll see uh, we'll see how that looks. Uh, I just before I start well I have already started taking this off the sprue but just wanted to point this out. I think that's really good. See how they've got a protective piece over these guys. I think that's a that's a nice one. Say so this is a late late nineties kit. I thought that was very well done. Now, one of the uh, the only problems is Gav will probably knock it off anyway. <laughs> but at least they thought about it. Right, I've just um, just given it a quick dry fit, really, just see what it looks like. Obviously, there's still sprue attachments that I've left on, but that's to give you an idea of the size of a Super Tweet. Yes, it's one in seventy two. Um, but they weren't huge aircraft, uh, you know. They were quite uh, quite minuscule. I think I said on my unboxing, what always gets me is when you see pictures of them on the ground. They are so low to the ground. How the heck they uh, they took off without scraping all those napalm and fuel tanks and everything? I've got no idea. But when you look at them, they really are really are low to the ground now. One thing I'll just have to check out for as well with this, which is something I'm bound to forget because I don't do many aircraft, is um, probably having to add some nose weight. I don't have any uh, official modelling products for nose weight, so I'll have to find something to to put in. But the fit seems fairly decent. Um, I'm just wondering, I'll have to jump ahead and look on the instructions and just see uh, the join there in the front wheel bay if uh, if that's going to be on show or not I'm hoping not I mean what am I saying it's that low to the ground you'll never see it but you know you, we all know it's there so I'm just wondering if it is I might have to put maybe something on, on the bottom of that we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge in a bit uh, but yeah it seems a, a fairly decent a fairly decent fit I mean this is just first putting the halves together let's have a quick look a bit closer on this tail section bit of a gap there I suppose you could say but I think some I use clay shapers you know the oh, I can't show them now they're under everything but uh, the soft rubber clay shapers that you, you do sculpting with and I use them to push my putty around as well Right, I've been doing lots of dry fitting, and I believe that is roughly how the. I'm, I'm useless at putting tubs into the actual airframes themselves. I never get it right, but that looks about right. It's only dry fitted. Um, I'm going to end the video now. As I say, I, I know I waffle on, so people get bored stiff. Um, but uh, next time you see it, I haven't turned the thing off. Sorry. Uh, next time you see it, um, I shall probably have either have painted all the details uh, inside. Uh, we've still got to have there's a there's a shroud over the top of the avionics, you know, the the, the flight the the panel uh, instrument gauges was the word I was after. Uh, so there's a couple of little bits to go, but um, 
I think for today we'll call that done. And how advanced it'll be next time you see it, I'm not sure, because I do try want to build a fair bit of it on camera. Uh, what I have noticed is you want to just fall out or do something. Uh, this will need a bit of filling down here. Um, that's quite a, a big seam line to, to do. And there's a couple other bits, I think that one will need some around it as well. But thank you very much for stopping by and taking a look. As I say, the, the next instalment will, uh, will, well, we'll just see how far we progress, really. I mean, it's only a little aeroplane. How long can it take? So thanks for stopping by and taking a look. Hopefully you'll, you'll want to see it progress. Uh, as I say, it's, it's done as a tribute to Gary. And uh, I, get to, I get to build an aircraft. I love my aircraft. I just don't do a lot of them because I'm useless at it. So thank you very much. And we'll catch each other soon on another video.